Imagine the Salem witch trials and those dark days of paranoia and baseless accusations. It's easy to think of them as a distant, spooky chapter from history, but their echoes are still felt today. The link between those events and our modern world is more real than you might expect, especially when we look at the case of Sabrina Butler, who was wrongfully convicted of killing her infant son. In this video, we'll explore how the fear and suspicion of Salem's past mirrors some of the challenges we face in today's justice system. By connecting these historical injustices with contemporary cases, we'll uncover how these old fears continue to impact us and what lessons we can learn to ensure that history doesn't repeat itself. To understand how the past echoes into the present, we need to journey back to one of the most infamous episodes of Injustice, The Salem Witch Trials, and focus in one heart-wrenching story of Rebecca Nurse. Rebecca was a deeply respected member of her Salem community. Born in 1621, she was a devout Christian, a loving wife, and a devoted mother. Her reputation was impeccable. She was known for her kindness and her strong moral character. Yet, despite her high standing in the community, she found herself at the center of one of the most tragic episodes of the Salem Witch Trials. The Witch Trials in Salem began in 1692 when a group of young girls claimed to be afflicted by witchcraft. The hysteria quickly spread through the town and accusations began flying. Rebecca Nurse was not initially one of the accused, but as the trials progressed, she became a target. The charges against her were based on nothing more than a mix of personal grudges and the overwhelming fear that had gripped the town. In March 1692, Rebecca was accused of witchcraft by a local family with whom she had disputes. The accusations were fueled by the ongoing paranoia and the chaotic environment in Salem. The court's evidence was shockingly thin. There were no concrete proofs of witchcraft, just hearsay, spectral evidence, which is claims of seeing the accused spirit harming others, and the testimony of people with personal vendettas. Rebecca's trial was a tragic farce. Despite her strong defense and the testimony of numerous people who attested to her good character, the atmosphere of fear and suspicion overshadowed reason. Even her own family members faced accusations, adding to the chaos and personal tragedy. Rebecca was ultimately found guilty of witchcraft and sentenced to death. On July 19, 1692, she was executed by hanging, becoming one of the 20 people executed during the Salem witch trials. Her death was not just a personal loss, but a symbol of the widespread miscarriage of justice occurring in Salem at that time. It was after 11 years since Rebecca passed that her verdict and other victims were overturned in 1711 on convictions of witchcraft. Now that we've seen how fear and suspicion shaped the Salem witch trials, let's dive into a more recent case that shows just how these issues can persist. Enter Sabrina Butler, a name that, unfortunately, became synonymous with a heartbreaking miscarriage of justice. Sabrina Butler was a young mother in 1989, Georgia, living a life that took a tragic turn when her infant son, Walter, died under heartbreaking circumstances. At just nine months old, Walter's death was initially thought to be a sudden, unexplained medical event. But things quickly went awry for Sabrina when investigators, swayed by the emotional weight of the case, began suspecting foul play. Instead of a thorough investigation, Sabrina faced a rush to judgment. The pressure was immense, and Sabrina found herself at the center of a media storm that painted her as a villain. Her trial was marked by sensationalist coverage and a lack of solid evidence. The prosecution relied heavily on emotionally charged arguments rather than concrete proof, and Sabrina's defense was underfunded and ineffective. The prosecution's case against Sabrina was built on shaky ground. The evidence was largely circumstantial, and experts later revealed that Walter's death was due to a medical condition known as a cardiac arrhythmia, something Sabrina could not have caused. However, the damage was already done. In 1990, Sabrina was convicted of murder and sentenced to death. Her life turned into a nightmare, and she spent years fighting for her innocence. It wasn't until 1995 that Sabrina's case saw a breakthrough. New evidence and a reevaluation of the medical findings revealed that the original conclusions were flawed. The true cause of Walter's death was a heart condition that could not have been predicted or prevented by Sabrina. After nearly a decade of wrongful imprisonment, Sabrina's conviction was overturned in 1995, and she was released from prison days before Christmas, fully exonerated. 
So, let's dig into how the Salem witch trials and Sabrina Butler's case stack up against each other. At first glance, they might seem worlds apart. One is a 17th century witch hunt, and the other is a 20th century wrongful conviction. But when you look closer, the similarities are pretty striking. In Salem, accusations were driven by fear and superstition. People were quick to believe that anyone who didn't fit the community's mold was a witch. There was a lot of pressure to confess or accuse others, even if it meant lying. The courts were swayed more by panic than by evidence. Fast forward to Sabrina Butler's case, and you'll see a similar pattern of fear and misunderstanding. Instead of witches, the accusation was of child murder, but the mechanics of the trial were eerily similar. Public opinion and social sensationalism played a huge role in her conviction, often overshadowing the actual evidence or lack thereof. Both cases share a common thread. When fear takes over, the system often fails to deliver true justice. In Salem, it was about paranoia and a lack of due process. In Sabrina's case, it was about rush judgments and a flawed legal system. Both situations saw individuals being judged not on the evidence, but on the hysteria surrounding them. Another parallel is the impact on the accused. In Salem, lives were ruined by baseless accusations and public outrage. Similarly, Sabrina's life was shattered by a wrongful conviction. Both faced extreme personal and public scrutiny, and both were left to deal with the aftermath of a system that failed them. Looking at these two cases side by side, it's clear that while the specifics of the accusations and the context are different, the underlying issues of fear, rush to judgment, and social influence are quite similar. So, what can we take away from comparing the Salem witch trials and Sabrina Butler's wrongful conviction? There are some crucial lessons here that apply to both the past and present. First, it's clear that fear can distort our sense of justice. In Salem, fear of which has led to a breakdown in rational thinking and fairness. Today, fear and media sensationalism can similarly skew our perception of justice. We see this in cases where public pressure or a rush to judgment can overshadow the actual evidence. Another big takeaway is the importance of due process. Both Salem and Sabrina's case show how crucial it is for the justice system to operate fairly and carefully. In Salem, Due process was non-existent, accusations were often enough to convict someone. In modern times, while we have more legal protections, cases like Sabrina's remind us that these protections aren't always perfect and can be compromised by factors like media influence or inadequate legal representation. The stories also highlight the need for empathy and thoroughness. For Sabrina Butler, the lack of compassion and the rush to judgment had devastating effects. When we fail to approach cases with empathy and a commitment to truth, we risk repeating these injustices. Finally, reflecting on these cases encouraged us to advocate for a justice system that learns from its past mistakes. By recognizing and addressing the flaws that have persisted from historical to modern times, we can work towards a system that upholds the principles of fairness and integrity. As we wrap up, it's clear that the echoes of Salem's witch hunts still resonate today, revealing how fear and rush to judgment can lead to profound injustices. Let's remain informed and thoughtful about the media narratives we consume and the impact they can have on public perception and justice. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share your thoughts and let's keep the conversation going about how we can create a more just and compassionate society. Thanks for watching and see you next time.